Brutus. Adinath lifestyle thumb of Kurada. They come after it. Okay, guys, good morning to all of you. Uh, today we are going to take an overview of your paper CSAT. I believe that uh, your introduction of mathematics has happened, right? So today I would like to highlight the importance of CSAT and not only from William's point of view, but also from your overall meaning some point of view. And I also would like to uh, tell you uh, how the CSAT was introduced, what was the logic behind this, and uh, what kind of minimum inputs that if you undertake in your prelim exam, you can devote or you can spare maximum time for uh, your GSP. Right. So let's start with basic information. Uh, the purpose of today's session is how to design a strategy for CSAT preparation. Okay, so uh, if you are conversant with this subject from the beginning, uh, you can start from the beginning itself and you will have ample time towards the prelim as far as preparation of GS is concerned. All right, so uh, let's start. So what is the significance of CSAT according to UPSC? Uh, UPSC introduced this paper in your prelim exam in the year of 2011, right? Before 2011, the pattern of prelim exam was different. Do you remember what was that pattern? Do you know all that? Before CSAT, there was one optional paper and one GS paper in prelim. Both were objective. An optional paper had almost twice the weightage of GS. And many people used to select popular options like public administration. And people had to read that subject only from one book. That is Lakshmi Khan's public administration. And they used to pass the program. That was the pattern of exam. Then the committee known as YKL committee. Um, while criticizing the pattern, say that uh, the prior pattern is based on university curriculum. Okay, whatever syllabus was there for optional and years was largely given by university curriculum. And it hardly checked the problem solving skills of uh, students. Okay, even their values were not taken into account. Their attitudes were not taken into account. Their attitude was not rigid. And those were mainly based on memorization of facts rather than understanding of the issue. Okay, that was the criticism. And some of the tests were repeated. So, as I told you, that many people used to offer public administration and they used to study only from one book. It itself indicates to what extent prelim was predictable. So the preparation of prelim was based on road learning rather than depth of understanding. And thereby, uh, you know, it created a problem for selection of right candidate itself. People who were better in road learning used to pass the prelims and they were the only one who used to write me. 
Okay, that was the issue. So what other community did? It compared entrance like prelim with the entrance exam of best business schools like IIM, then Harvard, and it said that um, the best business schools like Harvard, IIM are using aptitude test. Like in India, we have CAT. Okay, abroad you have GMAT. Okay, so these aptitude tests are best in terms of helping institutes to select right candidates. They not only check conceptual clarity, they also check problem solving skills. And you can also check uh, values, attitude, and aptitude of the candidate. And they are non repetitive in nature. Non repetitive means the questions which appear in CSAT are hardly repetitive. You can bring huge amount of variety in that. So root learning has no place for CSAT. Okay, unless you understand the question, unless you understand the process of solving the question, you cannot answer the question simply by reading it somewhere else. Are you getting my point? So the depth of understanding and your problem solving skills are checked in CSAT. Even the first pattern, the first two years paper, 11, 12, they also used to give you problem solving questions, like, you know, ethics case study question, but the size was small and they had no negative marking. They used to be only six questions towards the end of your CSAT paper and there were no negative marks for these questions. Okay, so they also used to check your uh, values, attitude and aptitude in those problem solving questions, which were based on certain situation like your officer, or you are a district collector or you are a police officer. But now they have done away with it because since 2013, they have introduced ethics paper. Okay, so that component is no longer there. So according to UPSC, this paper, CSAT, is good enough to select right candidate for right post. But in my opinion, the utility of CSAT is beyond politics. Okay, it is there for problems and you need to pass it. But if you look at it in a constructive way, in a holistic way, then in my opinion, you can use or learn something in CSAT which you can use in main exam purposes. I'm getting my point. So we'll discuss what is that. All right, so let's start. We'll start with the evolution of civil services exam because it has been my rule that whichever subject you take for study, you should start with history of that subject. Any subject you take, whether optional, years, any subject you take, you start with this origin. Then when you come to know why does it exist after so many years, what is its relevance? And whatever transformation it has underwent since its inception, why that change has happened? Are you getting my point? So you'll be surprised to know that in civil services exam, prior to 1979, there was no prelim exam. It was directly main examination and then interview. Are you aware of this? So let me tell you one fact at the beginning. People mistakenly believe that there is a huge competition in civil services examination. By looking at number, it is true. It appears like that. But if you look at people who are really taking good efforts to pass the exam, their numbers are few. Rest of the people are only doing what masses are doing. You know, masses, a crowd, or herd mentality, right? They look around them, who else is doing what, and they simply copy paste. So if someone is following Vision's monthly ranking, they will also follow Vision's monthly. If someone is taking questions from inside from India, they will take questions from inside of them. If someone is following Vajinam, they will follow Vajinam. This approach will never happen. Are you getting my point? If you really want to prepare this exam qualitatively. You need to raise questions. You need to be deeply curious than the others. You need to prove what you are doing deeply and ask certain questions. So for example, this exam that we are preparing, you should know its history. 
from where it has started, how it has started, what was its earlier nature. So when I say there was no prelim, there was main exam. At the time of independence, can you guess the number of candidates who could have written the exam? What do you think? Can you guess the number of candidates who could have written the exam at the time of beginning of independence? Directly main exam because there was no prelim. So can you guess the number? In number. How many people had appeared for civil services? Yes, all over India. How many people have tried, might have tried to pass the exam? Yes, any, any number, guess. 10,000. 10, what is your guess? 100. Fifty two hundred thousand. So the number was around three thousand eight hundred. All over India, people had appeared for civil services. Do you know what was the nature of the exam? There were three compulsory papers. Compulsory means common to all. So one was GK, general knowledge. Second was AC and third was English. Okay. And then there were three optional papers for all, for all services. And for elite services like IPS, IAS, there were two more options. So those who had opted for IS, IPS, IFS, they had to study five optional paper. Are you getting my point? Then they allowed use of uh, Indian languages for only GK and AC in 1969. Okay, the language which are mentioned in any schedule of the Indian option. That was allowed in 1969. Then came Kothari Kabir, 74 77. And it advised government for introducing new exam scheme to replace the old one. So, what is peculiar about this period, 74 77? Can you tell me? What is the significance of this period in Indian history? Yes, 7477. Don't you remember? This period of significance. It was emergency period. Okay, people had sent brutal power of the government, and especially youth, they wanted to enter into the government and change the government inside. So they started writing exam on a last scale. And it became a problem for UPSC to check the paper of such a large number of candidates. So, Kothari Commission came and it recommended we should introduce one more stage to weed out non serious candidates. So, prelim was introduced in 1979 and the exam pattern was changed. Okay, AC was removed, then two GS paper were introduced. Two language papers were introduced and two optional were written. So that was the change brought by Kothari Commission. And this change continued till 2013. So 1979 30 is another phase of civil services exam. But during that phase, this Satish Chandra Committee reintroduced AC again, which was removed by Kothari Commission. Okay, AC was there earlier, but it was removed by Kothari Commission. It was again introduced by Satish Chandra Committee for 200 marks. Then came YK Alan Committee. Okay, in 2001. And it again suggested restructuring of both prelim and main exam. So it suggested aptitude test and it also suggested main exam restructuring. So whatever changes we have today, have their origin in the reports of YKLR committee. 
and that report is still available on Google. You must go in there and look and see how they think about the nature of the exam. What is the basic objective to introduce new changes? Okay, can you tell me the significance of 2001? What is the significance of year 2001? Yes. In the history of India, 2001, as a what will you answer? Yes, 2001. What is its significance? In 2001, LPG reforms had completed one decade. Right? LPG reforms in liberalization, privatization, and globalization, which were ushered in India in 1991, had completed one decade in 2001. By that time, the government's role had changed. Government role change means earlier it was. License quota permit right? the government closely used to control many industrial sectors, their activities. Even government had a monopoly in many sectors. In 1991, it opened economy for the private sector. And instead of license quota permit right? it started acting as a regulator, okay, as a watchdog. But to make that happen, government had to closely work with private sector. Sometimes private sector and public sector collaborated on many projects. So you might have heard about PPP, public private partnership. Now, the old set of officers were not suitable to bring about that change. Even the nature of corruption came that we are going to discuss in details. The earlier form of corruption and new form of corruption were no longer seen. So before selecting the right kind of candidates for the administration, they needed a new set of tests to check the candidates' values it takes. I'm getting my point. And that's why they suggested new scheme of exam. Then SK Khanda Committee came, it devised the syllabus of CSAT. Then CSAT was introduced in 2011. Okay. Uske pehle in 2008 mein negative marking shuru ho gaya. What is the significance of 2008? Yes. In the Indian history, we started experiencing slowdown effect of America. In America, in 2005, there was subprime crisis. Have you heard about this crisis? American economy was in recession and its impact was felt in India in 2008. And in the same year, I mean, many candidates who were working in private sector had lost their job and they started writing government exam. So, again, to weed out non serious candidates, the government introduced negative marketing system in 2008. I'm getting the point. So, these changes. Whatever changes are brought about in exam are in response to change in mind. Always keep it. That we have to learn now onwards. These systems are interconnected. Okay, economic, political, administrative, they are interconnected. All right. But within two years of introduction of CSAT, in North India, many aspirants started protesting against CSAT, saying that it discriminates North Indians against South Indians. They mistakenly believed that all South Indians speak good English and they have good aptitude. The government had appointed Nick Baker Committee, Dr. Arun Nick Baker, who was chairman of UGC. He said that it is not North South divide, it is the urban rural divide. Urban candidates receive better schooling than their rural counterparts. Are you getting my point? Yes. 
So rural can urban candidates are better placed than their rural counterparts to compete in this exam. So what they suggested that this should be made qualified. So they first removed English comprehension in 2014, and in 2015, CSAT was made qualified. So after seven years, the status of CSAT is still is a qualifying paper in prelims. Where you need to score minimum 33% of 200, that is 66 marks. Then your GS score is taken into account, and according to cutoff, your eligibility for main exam is decided. Is that clear? All right. So, my question to you do you think CSAD is still relevant, still useful? Yes. Do you think we should study CSAT altogether? We should keep it as optional. Yes. What is your answer? Online people, can you answer me? Yes, Akash. Do you think we should still study the CSAT? Yes. Why? Because unless you pass it, you are not allowed to write me. Right. Moreover, since it's qualifying nature, 2015, the paper is becoming a bit tough. Okay, it is no longer the same paper which was there in the interval. So even passing the paper becoming difficult without at least some good enough preparation. So those people who take things at Cadman are regretting their choices after month of brilliant results. Many of them had better results in years, more than cut off, but they had plumped CSAT. And that's tragic, is it not? You're altogether losing out one attempt for the sake of a minor paper who is qualified. Not only that, my point is CSAT teaches you something, some set of skills, like reading comprehension, making out conclusions, making out inferences, figuring out assumptions, all these skills, analytical skills, they help you also in many examples. Let me tell you why. This is an era of IT, information technology, right? Knowledge is available on fingertips, is it not? This small device, which one? Is as good as world's library, is it not? I can store anything on this video, PDF, any file format, and I can read it anywhere I want as long as I have internet connection. Even though I have not, I can download at one time and get, travel around the world with it and access the knowledge wherever I want. I'm getting my point. If that is the case, then in my opinion, everything is available to everyone. Uh, one simple fact that the few years back was one day late for Pune. It was not published within Marath. It was either from Bangalore or Chennai or Hyderabad. Now you can get it in your village, e paper. So everything is available to everyone. You name it and it is there. Even notes from Delhi classes. Even aspirants have put all the books in scanned video format on YouTube. NCRTs, you name it and it is there. Are you getting my point? Every sort of material is available. Then what makes difference in the quality of preparation? Is it not? There is no such a material which is available to only few privileged people. That's a linear. Anyone can access any material. That kind of equality is there. Then what makes a difference in preparation? Then the quality of preparation comes by processing your information. How you better process your information? How you better process the country? To what extent you extract hidden meaning out of the country? To what extent you can present in a logical and orderly fashion? To what extent you can read between the lines? To what extent you can articulate your viewpoint in a better manner? CSAT has potential to teach you all these things 
if you pay close you know attention to CSAT. see i'm not saying that you should pay extra attention to CSAT. you need to do what you are supposed to do only think about it how you can use the same set of skills while writing the main exam and if you do that the quality of your preparation will be starkly different than the others i'm making my point that's the point I would like to highlight towards the beginning of the lecture. Is that clear? All right, let's move towards some basic questions. What is this strategy and how do you look at it? Can you define this strategy? Yes. We use it, right? Normally, in our informal conversations, this word is used multiple times. Is it not? No. Sometimes we explain to our friend, this is my strategy. Is it not? Uh, we talk of the strategy in terms of cricket games. Is it not? What is strategy of Captain Virat Kohli? What was strategy of Mahindra Singh Dhoni and all that? So, how do you look at this word or concept called strategy? Yes. No idea. Any simple definition of strategy that you can think of. Online people, you can also give me your answer. What is strategy basically? How you define it? See, strategy is basically a plan, but it is not simply a plan. Then there would be no difference between plan and strategy. Every strategy is a plan, but not every plan is a strategy. Then what kind of plan it is? Calculated. Calculated plan. Okay. Then. Understanding. Strategy means having multiple plans in one plan. You take into account multiple possibilities while you are trying to achieve your objectives. So what if something goes wrong, you have plan B. What if this happens, you have plan C. What if that happens, you have plan B. So when you have multiple plans ready to deal with eventualities, possibilities, then it is your strategy. Okay, like in chess, we have different strategies to move the pieces, depending on what, how the opponent moves the pieces. So it is not simply plan, it is not rigid plan, it is flexible, dynamic plan, consisting of multiple plans. Why it is needed? Because the situation that you are facing is no static, it is dynamic. Similarly, your six act paper is not a static paper, it is a dynamic paper. It is influenced by multiple variables. And to deal with each and every variable and eventualities, you need multiple plans. Are you getting my point? Single plan won't help you. That's why you need strategy. Okay, what is aptitude? And why this test is called aptitude? Yes. Why not talent test or intelligence test? In what way intelligence and aptitude differ from each other? Yes, Priyanka, you want to answer? Okay, go ahead. Am I audible, sir? Yes, go ahead. Aptitude is the natural ability to do, do something. Okay, and what about intelligence? No idea, sir. What is the difference between these two? Aptitude is the natural ability. Hmm. And? Intelligence is? Mm. Is it not natural intelligence? Yes. All right. Good try, Priyanka. Thank you. Anybody else? Why not talent test? Why not genius test? Yes, these are the different words which are sometimes used interchangeably. Okay. okay. All right, fair enough. But still, it is not specific difference. What else it could be? See, not every aptitude helps you to solve the problem. 
So problem solving is not the major thrust of aptitude. It is just a part of aptitude. Aptitude is of course natural ability, but it is limited to specific field. So that's why you have different aptitude tests for different fields. Are you getting my point? So for example, medical entrance exam. Need tests your aptitude for medical field. Then IITG or MSCAT. These exams test your aptitude for engineering field. Is it not? Then CAT, GMAT, they test your aptitude for management. Similarly, CSAT. Are you getting my point? Sometimes even elements of CSAT and CAT are almost similar. But if you look at the content of passages, they clearly hint what kind of aptitude they are measuring or trying to measure by like giving you those passages which are not like CAT passages. So in CSAT, they are trying to measure the aptitude for civil services. Are you getting my point? And that's why this test is known as aptitude test because they are checking your ability for civil services. Why do you need strategy at all? Because as I said, this is a qualifying paper. You need to spend minimum time on this, but it is uncertain paper as well, dynamic paper as well. Many people who have ignored this paper have failed in projects. You should not be one among them. Because despite having better quality preparation of your GS, if you fail in prelims, that is a bigger priority. Are you getting my point? That's why you need what? Strategy. All right. Let's pay attention to different elements of CSAC syllabus. RC. RC ka matlab kya hai? Reading comprehension. It constitutes a dominant part of syllabus. Okay. Almost every year, around 25 plus questions are asked without deviation since beginning. Then second dominant part is logical reasoning, analytical ability. Okay. And third dominant part is general mental ability, including basic English. Fourth is about decision making. No, data interpretation and DIDS. This part is no longer there. Even English comprehension is no longer. Okay, English comprehension was more about your language ability than about content. Reading comprehension is more about content and less about language ability. Okay, in reading comprehension, you have Hindi passages or English passages translated. But in English comprehension, it was not the case. Okay. In DIDS, you have mainly graphs, charts, pie charts, bar graphs, line charts, tables, and data sufficiency questions. Okay. Now we will pay attention to uh, element-wise bifurcation of questions. Okay. Let's take a look at table. And tell me what do you see? Is it visible? So, as I said, RC is consistent. Is it not? I'm only depicting you questions since 2015 to 22. Okay, so RC is consistent. This is no longer there in the comprehension. LRA has suddenly gone down in the last three years. So, 2022 will again suddenly seven questions. But again, sometimes you know UPC sarcastically called as unpredictable for the solution. Okay, you don't know when they will suddenly increase the number of questions in, uh, in log logical reasoning and analytical ability. Then look at maths. Since last three years, the number of questions are going up. So suddenly, last year they had asked 
40 questions out of 80. So 50% weightage to mathematics. Then the ideas, again, consistently questions are there, but sometimes they have asked none. Okay, nothing. Okay, and uh, since 2013, this last component decision making, interpersonal skills, including communication skills, ICCS, ISCS, is no longer there. But still, it is given in syllabus. All right. So these are the three main parts you need to pay attention: RC, LRA, GMA, and BM. These are your three important components. Okay. Now we will look at some of the elements of strategy. Okay, one by one. So let's look at RC questions and write down the types of questions you need to deal with in RC. These are the four categories of questions. Which are asked in RC. Okay, inference is the dominant part of question. Do you know meaning of inference? Inference is something which is not directly given in the passage. Okay, you need to figure it out by looking at the passage. Inference is not directly given in the passage, it's like reading between the lines. Then main idea, assumption, and direct and specific questions. All right. The next is this is simply types of question, but if you look at number of questions, okay, same. The inference has remained consistent, main idea has increased, while assumption has also increased since, since 2015. Okay, while direct and specific questions have come down. Now, one interesting thing I would like to tell here is this is the type of sawal. In killing methods, okay, for inference, main idea, and assumption. There are specific methods which you can use to figure out answers. But if you chota wala hai, direct and specific, there is no specific method. Why? Because the way a question could be asked could be anything, depending on content, depending on concept, depending on demand. So there are infinite variations in fourth category. But first, second, and third are predictable. And that is fortunately a substantial part of your answer. Okay, so these three types of questions you can easily predict. You can learn their methods and you can solve. But ye jo fourth hai, isme thoda sa variation hai. Isko aap pin down nahi kar sakte method ko. That's how to answer. But if you practice enough, this fourth wala also can be mastered. But what I am trying to say here is, as far as this fourth category is concerned, you need to be extra alert because there is no method. As far as these three, once you learn the method, you can do it easily. Each type of question has its own method to solve. Main idea, inference, assumption, there are methods. But as far as this fourth is concerned, there are no methods. Okay. So this is in short about types of answer questions. Now, what are the things you need to keep in mind while solving RC questions that we'll discuss? Write down. First is language ability. Of course, they are checking your language ability. And in language ability, they are trying to check your conceptual clarity. Second, you need to be aware of different types of RC questions. Okay, second strategy is 
types of asking questions. Third is about comfort with the topic of the passage. Now, why this is important? Because see, as a human nature, we may not be you know, passionate about all subjects. Do you agree? Or we may not have liking for all subjects. I know sometimes. So for some people, philosophy is like, you know, upar se jaana hai. Too abstract to deal with it. I know sometimes, you know, philosophy has done me hota hai. For some people, who had left science stream since 10th standard. Science becomes challenging. For some people, humanity subjects are challenging. For some people, economics is challenging. So, aapko ye hona chahiye, what are those topics where you are comfortable and where you are not? Okay. Thirdly, different approaches to handle different styles of writing. So, जो भी passages लिखे जाते हैं, वो एक ही style से लिखे नहीं जाते, उसके अलग-अलग style है. Sometimes, some passages are given from old text. Old text means written in 17th century, 18th century. So, उस वक्त का writing कैसे होता था वालों, English particularly. One paragraph is equal to one state. Are you getting my point? In modern era, we used to write simple short sentences. Abhi jo likh rahe hai. Wo kaise hota hai? Simple and short. Even if they are complex and compound, still they are not that lengthy compared to equal one paragraph. Lekin old jo style tha, wo vaise nahi tha. So, so structured writing ke saath kaise deal karna hai and unstructured writing ke saath kaise deal karna hai. That you need to know. So that is second last. And last is about different traps used by examiners to deceive you. Okay, sometimes to confuse you, out of four options, two can be easily eliminated, but the remaining two appear too close to choose. They resemble to each other. And you get confused. And that is where lies the trap used by examiners to trap you. Okay, so you need to be aware of all these traps beforehand so that you will be alert while choosing the option. Is that clear? So, these five things we have to do. We will take language ability. Language ability is a good vocabulary. Now, let me tell you one thing. The vocabulary that is asked in your CSAT paper is not beyond your newspaper. Whatever you come across in CSAT, you already have read that in newspaper, but you have not paid attention to it from vocabulary point of view. Many times people take for granted their knowledge of the words. They even refuse to use dictionaries. That need not happen. Okay. So there will be one independent session for vocabulary as a part of CSAT, where I will try to highlight the importance of vocabulary and its different dimensions. Vocabulary is not simply about knowing a word and its meaning, but it is more than that. And you need to learn all that, okay? So first element you need to pay attention in language abilities vocabulary. Don't take it for granted. See, I'm not saying that you should have Shakespearean vocabulary. No, no. You know, one thing about Shakespeare, when Shakespeare wrote at that time, English language had five lakhs words and he used seven lakhs words. So Shakespeare literally invented one's own words. Are you getting my point? You need not be that genius. You need to be fairly aware of whatever vocabulary is used in newspaper, that's all. Just pay attention, be curious, take pause and take a pain to go through dictionary, that's all. Okay, even I'm going to tell you that never ever use mobile dictionary. They deprive you of good vocabulary. They, they breeding complacence. If you want to use or make use of good dictionary, it should be hardbound, always there on your table. Mobile dictionaries are counterproductive. 
they make you complacent. They never increase your vocabulary. Okay, I'll tell you why later on. Second is nuanced understanding of grammar. Okay, in grammar, write down uh, vocabulary ke liye source pehle likho. A good source of vocabulary is Oxford's Advanced Learner Dictionary. Oxford's Advanced Learner's Dictionary. Okay. And second is Roget's Thesaurus. Roget's Thesaurus. T-H-E-S-A-U-R-U-S. Thesaurus. Okay, these are the excellent books for vocabulary. Third, you can use, but it is extra. Word Power Made Easy by Norman Lewis. Word Power Made Easy by Norman Lewis. That is a red color book. Okay, it's good book. Okay, second is nuanced understanding of grammar. One is tenses and their correct uses. Okay, what we call in Marathi Kaal. Okay, second is sentence structures. Different types of sentence structures and how they are employed to explain the meaning. Okay, sentence structures. And third is correct uses. Correct uses of different terms and Phrases. Okay. Okay, one good source right now for grammar is English Grammar by Ren and Martin. English grammar by Renan Martin. Third, awareness about indicator words and their functions in the text. So indicator words are like paragraph connectors that we discussed in EC. So remember, uh, indicator words like because, therefore, thus, hence, since, they indicate cause and effect relationship. Indicator words like like, just like, also, so also, similarly, they indicate similarity. Indicator words like but, however, nonetheless, despite, they indicate contradiction or contrast. So these indicator words sometimes deliberately used by a writer to show you what he or she is doing. And you need to pay attention to these indicator words so that the text becomes clear to you. Is that clear? Are you getting my point? So these are the three things you need to pay attention to while focusing on language ability. Second is about types of question. For example, like main idea. There will be an independent session on main idea. But sometimes the question about main idea are not as straightforward. They don't ask every time what is the main idea. Sometimes they ask you what is the crux. Means main idea. What is the central theme? Also means main idea. Okay. Or which of the following best sums of the passage? Means main idea. Are you getting my point? Or the above passage centrally revolves around. Means the main idea. So you need to be aware about these different phrases which are used to ask about main idea and how to figure out main idea. Similarly about inference. Okay, inference I told you, reading between the lines. Inference is something which is not directly given in the passage. So again, it is not simply asking what is inference. Sometimes they ask you what is implied? What are the implications? 
So they all mean inference that you need to keep in mind. And sometimes author while writing something makes certain assumptions, but he or she doesn't share those assumptions. So you should be fairly, you know, conversant about methods of figuring out assumptions. And finally, specific questions. Whenever specific questions are asked, then you need to be alert. Why? Because there are no methods. They can be asked in any manner. You need to pay attention to exact demand of the specific question. And last category of question, author's purpose. So far, not a single question has been asked on author's purpose, but who knows? Okay, as UPC is unpredictable, they might start asking that too. So we will take one session for author's purpose as well. All right, so these different types of RC question will be discussed in the classroom. Some model exercises will be undertaken and we will also undertake some of the previous year's questions asked by UPSC just to get the idea how different types of RC questions are asked. Is that clear? All right. Now write down these three approaches which are used for writing or solving RC passages. In most of the passages, first approach is used. So almost 95% of the passages can be solved by using first approach. Why? Because it is used when the passage has a structure. First approach is used when the passage has a structure. Are you getting my point? When the passage has a structure, but not all passages have the structure. Maximum passages have the structure. Why? Because most of the passages that are given in your CSAT are written in modern times. Modern times means contemporary. Which like two, three years may he be given passages up to date. Bohat kam passages is say Quran is a manual. So most of the passages have structure where you can use first method. But where there is no structure or it is not easily visible, then you are using storyline method. So storyline method is ago. It is used where structure is not available or not easily visible. Structure is not available or not easily visible. You're right. And third method is used when you need to read less and understand maximum. When you have less time available. So what you do, you optimize your reading in less time. You read less and understand more. Are you getting my point? So third method helps you to read less and understand more. And it is used when the time available is less. So what you do, you read in bits and pieces, and then you try to read, understand the passage. Is that clear? So this every method has its own application. Pahle method ka application ka hai, where there is a structured writing. Second ka application ka hai, where is there is no structured writing. And third, when the time is less. Is that clear? So, ye teeno tarike aapko samjhe jai. And these are also provided in your CSAT notes. All right. Next. Basic numeracy and general mental ability. Please pay attention to topics. Aapke matches karne bhi aapko ye dikhaya hoga hai na not pie chart but analysis so in this if you pay attention to the topics these five topics write down their names they are the dominant topic of your maths and they are general topics 
general means there are no specific things about these topics. They can be used anywhere. Number system, average, percentage, ratio, proportion, simplification. Okay. This may have basic concepts you can easily deal with these topics. So you go up priority in your preparation of maths. And those people who have phobia of maths, you know, phobia. They say maths is high data, that is a situation. Okay. But those who are comfortable with maths, they can start when the prelim is around the corner. These rest of the topics are specific and they have their own method. Special topics. In ki khud ki method hai, ye generally solve ne kiye jas. So UPC also, you know, pays less attention to technical special topics and it pays more attention to generalized topics. Is that clear? You come up here. Permutation, combination, clock, mixture, work time, profit loss, railway, probability, age, area, volume, height, distance, calendar, race. Okay, these are the technical topics. But what is the thought behind these all topics? They are changing your conceptual clarity and ability to use concepts in everyday life. Are you getting my point? In mathematics also, they are trying to check your conceptual clarity and ability to use this concept in day-to-day -day life. Okay, specific application. If you pay attention to table, okay, so these first five are consistently asked every year. Okay, even this permutation combination is also consistent. But rest of the topic are not consistent. Sometimes there are, sometimes there are. Are you getting my point? Yes. The first five, six topics are consistent, but rest of the topic, if you pay attention, sometimes you'll find there are zero number of questions. Okay. All right. Are you getting my point? So this is an analysis of Mathematics questions. Now, while dealing with maths, you need to pay attention to these things. Okay, what is basic numeracy? So, basic numeracy may kya hai aapko? number system ka awareness hona chahi. Different types of or categories of numbers. So, rational number kisko bolte hai? Irrational number kisko bolte hai? Unke properties kya hai? Ya phir divisibility test kya hoti hai? Na, kaun se number hai which are divided by four? Okay, you have to know that. 7 ki divisibility test kya hai, 11 ki kya hai. All these come under basic numbers. Even simple mathematical operations like square, square root, cube, cube root, factorial, HS, SCM, LCM. You have to know that. What we call in Marathi, the Sal Masal. Right? All this you need to know. Basic numbers. Then what are the key demands of the topic? Is key demand a key hai? जो आपको डिस्क्रिप्टिव में दिया है उसको कैलकुलेशन फॉर्मेट में डालना है इक्वेशन फॉर्मेट में डालना है सो मोस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस व्हिच आर गिवन टू यू इन मैथ्स आर इन डिस्क्रिप्टिव फॉर्मेट स्टेटमेंट फॉर्मेट एंड यू नीड टू कन्वर्ट दोस स्टेटमेंट इनटू इक्वेशंस एंड देन सॉल्व द आंसर ओके नाउ व्हाट आर द थिंग्स टू बी केप्ट इन माइंड इसमें First, don't try to remember too many formulas. You'll get confused in the exam. Which formula is situation you use? Rather, you should use an ability to create the formula according to the demand of the topic. Is that clear? Formula, don't forget to create it. That is key demand. Second, sometimes you can use tally method. Tally means 
instead of undertaking step by step method to solve the problem you can simply look at options and cross check which option fits the answer is that clear so that reduces the amount of time needed to solve the problem so this is known as reverse engineering you already have one of the answer given in the option right instead of solving the problem you just look at the answer and see which option solves the question that's all and finally don't ignore language ability limit sometimes cunningly surreptitiously they are putting such words and phrases into your problems that you don't pay attention to but they change the meaning of the sentence they change the meaning of the problem are you getting my point for example word like only only if if and then unless all these words have certain functions are you getting my point so even in maths don't think it is purely about maths is that clear whenever you are dealing with questions of mathematics topic don't think that it is only about mathematics it is also about your language ability they are twisting the language to deceive you okay so isme agar basic se shuruaat karni hai to kahan se shuru karna hai likho from ncert books okay ncert books 6 to 8 standard pehle okay pehle step mein 6 to 8 standard and dusre isme 9 to 10 standard 6 to 8 standard into 10 standard okay and class notes will be more than enough okay because sir is sujit kaur sir is going to comprehensively cover your syllabus of maths and he already has notebook which you, you are going to use in the classroom and you are going to solve the problem in the classroom okay then lra questions no pay attention to the topic first is puzzle and most popular you can write name for puzzle as data arrangement means they give you a data which is not organized in a logical order it is given in random order and it is also not complete complete means not all data is given it is incomplete but by using incomplete data you need to order it logically and then complete the data by using certain set of conditions which are inherent in the data and then you solve the puzzle are you getting my point how many of you have been interested in puzzles since your childhood that you try to solve the puzzle so you might have heard about shakuntala devi have you heard about shakuntala devi ha unki kuch kitab hai puzzle to puzzle ya fir number systems ye kitab aap leke padho if you want to solve harder puzzles then there is another author known as george sommers okay unki puzzle to aur challenging hai George Summers. Okay, but as far as our syllabus are concerned, the puzzles are predictable. उसमें five by three matrix होता है, okay? या फिर setting arrangement होती है, okay? या फिर blood relation के ऊपर भी puzzle होता है, blood relation and mean number of people, okay? Second category non-verbal reason. Non-verbal का मतलब है diagrams, words नहीं होते. ओके सीक्वेंस होता है मिसिंग डायग्राम फोल्डिंग एंड फोल्डिंग कटिंग पेपर पीसे से उसको एक साथ लगाओ और उसका कुछ बनाओ ऐसे टाइप का डायग्राम ओके देन जजमेंटल रीजनिंग जजमेंटल रीजनिंग में कंक्लूजन निकालना होता है देन डायरेक्शन सेंस टेस्ट मींस यू नीड टू नो सर्टेन की आइडियाज लाइक मैप रीडिंग नॉर्थ साउथ ईस्ट वेस्ट देन मूवमेंट ट्रेसिंग जो पहले ईस्ट गया 500 meters then west gaya 700 meters then south gaya 900 meters then what is the distance between starting point and end point then blood relations means sometimes they use equation format or sometimes they use narration format narration means my mother's sister husband is my dot dot so narration format un narrat ko then when diagram ek cube Okay, so see, if you look at 
आरिस अग्रवाल वर्बल नॉन वर्बल रीजन है बड़ा वाला उसमें बहुत सारे टॉपिक है ओके बट यू नीड नॉट पे अटेंशन टू ऑल टॉपिक बिकॉज यू पी सी डोकस ऑन ऑल टॉपिक इट फोकस इज ऑन ओनली रिपीटेड सो आउट ऑफ दिस टेन और ट्वेल्व टॉपिक्स ओके दे आर नॉट आस्किंग यू मच इवन द नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन आर ऑल्सो बिकमिंग लेस ऑन नॉन वर्बल रीजन ठीक है now what are the things you need to keep in mind as far as logical reasoning and analytical ability is concerned first there is little or no use of formula okay so there are few topics like q where you can use formula but not compulsory okay so isme formula nahi lagta hai ye aapko dhyan mein rakhna hai like maths second diversity bahut hai lekin okay not a single question is similar डायवर्सिटी बहुत है इसमें वेरिएशन बहुत है सो so, अगर आपको इसमें गुड इनफ मास्टरी लाना है तो आपको प्रैक्टिस ही करना है दैट यू मीन यू यू डोंट हैव ऑप्शन टू प्रैक्टिस ओके हर एक टॉपिक को ले लो और उसमें गुड इनफ नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन टू यू प्रैक्टिस अगेन एंड अगेन यू आर कंफर्टेबल अबाउट दैट टॉपिक यही इसका मेथड है देन फॉर सर्टन टॉपिक्स यू नीड टू लर्न अबाउट की आइडियाज like blood relations in blood relations gender is important okay so for example a is brother of b so you know a gender is male right but what about b can you tell the relation of b to a no depending on gender it could be brother or sister are you getting my point when i say a is brother of b so b is a sibling that is clear enough but which sibling male sibling or female sibling is not so there are certain topics where key ideas are important and unless you need read and learn about those key ideas you cannot solve the questions successfully okay you will be confused sometimes ye jo uh, fifth wala point hai important hai sometimes in upsc you come across such question which you have not solved even once in your life wo jo type hai category hai us tarike ke sawal aapne kabhi solve nahi kiye aise bhi sawal aapko dete then in such cases if you really want to know the method then you need to pay attention to nature of information wo information kya hai aur usko kaise diya hai ye agar aapke dhyan mein aaya you can establish a pattern of information and that pattern itself offers you solution is that clear so usko samajh lene ke liye i will give you certain such questions where you know method is already not clear and yet you have to solve the question okay then here also you can use tally method in sometimes instead of using step by step method you can directly look at the option and solve the problem and finally pay attention to twist of language twist of language means even language ability is used to confuse you trap you ye bhi aapko bhul raha hai so in all three elements major elements like rc mathematics and logical reasoning language ability is must that you need to keep in mind is that clear kyunki agar sawal ka matlab hi samajh mein nahi aaya to sawal kaise solve karo are you getting my point so language ability is must now overall strategic elements dekho kya kya hai first start with easy elements okay jo hard hai aapke liye kaun sa bhi ho usse shuruaat mat karo that undermines your confidence aapko confidence kabhi nahi karna hai So, जो टॉपिक आपके लिए सिंपल है उससे शुरुआत करो उसके ऊपर एक होल्ड बना ग्रिप बना उसको कंसोलिडेट करो एंड वंस यू आर कंफर्टेबल विद द इजी टॉपिक गो फॉर हार्ड टॉपिक बिकॉज यू ऑलरेडी हैव एलिवेटेड लेवल ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस ओके सेकंड ऐसा होता है ना बहुत बार देखो मेनी टाइम्स इट हैपन्स वी प्लान वेल एंड वी ट्राई टू एग्जीक्यूट वेल लेकिन सब कुछ एग्जीक्यूट नहीं होता है ऐसा होता है आपने देखा है लाइफ में you plan almost each and everything but not everything falls into place hai na sab kuch nahi hota hai so sometimes it may happen that by the time you are facing exam day you may not have studied everything of since that aisa bhi ho sakta hai na because of many factors like you paid too much attention with years you said or you thought that you will prepare since that at the time of exam and so on and so forth but you couldn't so at least you should be aware of your ignorance 
ऐसे कौन से टॉपिक है जिसमें मेरा प्रोफेशन नहीं और ऐसे अगर टॉपिक आपके एग्जाम में आ जाए उसको टच नहीं मत करो वाई बिकॉज इट क्वालिफाइड सो इवन इफ यू करेक्टली सॉल्व थर्टी क्वेश्चन स्टिल यू पास द एग्जाम इन सी सैट आर गेटिंग माई पॉइंट थर्टी का मतलब कितना हो गया ट्वेंटी फाइव टू पॉइंट फाइव इंटू थर्टी सेवेंटी फाइव मार्क्स वॉट इज द मिनिमम कट ऑफ सिक्सटी सिक्स माई पॉइंट सो जो ऐसे सवाल है जिसके बारे में आपका प्रिपेशन नहीं हुआ है उसको हाथ मत लगाओ ओके दैट शुड बी ओवरऑल स्ट्रेटेजी then you should be also aware of your reading speed hai na q if you count the number of words in csat paper roughly they are 8000 words paper mein jo aata hai question paper usme aapko kitne words padne hain 8000 but ek hi reading mein sab samajh mein aata hai kya nahi aata at least an ordinary person like us need to read twice तब भी आपको समझ में आया सवाल क्या है कंटेंट क्या है नाउ दिस डिवाइडेड बाय नंबर ऑफ मिनट्स अवेलेबल बट उसमें सिर्फ पढ़ते रहो कि आपको सॉल्व भी करना है तो रफली इफ यू कम अक्रॉस एक्सपेक्टेड रीडिंग ऑफ स्पीड 150 वर्ड्स पर मिनट आपको पढ़ने की आदत चाहिए That is the expected reading speed. Then, before entering into exam hall, you should be fairly aware of where you are in terms of reading speed. Whether we are better than expected or less than expected. Accordingly, you know to what extent you can go ahead. And there is another thing. Many people don't take second round of answering. They say that in one round, I will solve as much as possible. Means one twenty minutes. Okay. But some people say that no, I will come back. and i will try to solve those questions which i couldn't in the first round so again depending on that strategy your reading speed will change is that clear then targeted marks expected accuracy and number of questions to be solved iske liye main aapko table dikhaunga okay iske baad mein then time saving methods like elimination method are you aware of this elimination method ha huh? ek statement agar galat ho jata hai to teen option galat ho jata hai samjha rahe So, ये बहुत बार आपको हेल्प करता है टू सेव द टाइम देन टाइम मैनेजमेंट सो एज आई सेड इफ यू आर गोइंग टू अटेम्प्ट से ओनली वन राउंड इसमें 80 क्वेश्चन के लिए आपके पास 120 मिनट सो so, 40 क्वेश्चन के लिए कितने मिनट है राइट सो so, 20 क्वेश्चन के लिए हाफ एन आवर सो एवरी हाफ एन आवर यू शुड चेक वेदर यू हैव एटलीस्ट अटेम्प्टेड 20 क्वेश्चन और नॉट और एटलीस्ट रेड 20 क्वेश्चन और नॉट ये टाइम मैनेजमेंट का जो रफ एस्टीमेट है आपके दिमाग में होना चाहिए एंड फाइनली यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू फिगर आउट इजी क्वेश्चन जो किसकी वजह है मैं आपको बताऊंगा क्या है अगर ये आपने सीख लिया यू कैन इजीली पास इन सेट ओके सो ये एलिमेंट समझ में आ गए नो लुक एट टेबल मानो आपने 80 मार्क्स का टारगेट रखा है ओके Are getting my point? And you are trying to solve eighty questions. So eighty percent, eighty marks. के लिए आपको percent of accuracy चाहिए fifty five percent. So number of questions which are to be correct are forty four out of eighty. Is that clear? अगर ये target hundred हो जाता है, then accuracy need to increase to sixty three percent. And number of correct questions should be fifty. Is that clear? Why, sir, sir? If you already know accuracy and targeted marks, you can decide number of questions to get them. Is that clear? Because every one's accuracy is same, not? No, it can be reduced. It can be reduced. So accordingly, you have to decide. And this table I am going to share with you when the exam is around the corner. You have to use the word that when you are giving mock test. Us waqt aapko khud ke preparation ka अंदाज आ जाएगा एंड दिस टेबल विल हेल्प यू टू डिजाइन योर ट्रैक कौन से कितने माह टारगेट रखना है कितनी एक्यूरेसी है आपकी और कितने सवाल आपको करेक्टली सॉल्व करना है क्लियर ये हमने नाइनटीन का एनालिसिस किया था प्लीज 
Take a look and tell me what you see. So what is your perception of this table? And this analysis is also true for last year's paper. Same, every year, the same analysis is found. Q, see, this is again qualifying paper. So qualifying only what is People are taking it for granted. But if you pay attention to paper, almost 50% of the questions are easy. But in log, what are they? Difficult me here. Now, if you're difficult, the percentage is very low. Very low. Hardly 10 or 12%. But in yes, all is okay. Sometimes even your teacher finds it difficult to answer within that. So, yes, all is okay. You have to show nine. That's why they are here. UPC is also checking their ability to take a call to engage or not with the type of question. Because good samasya is here today, which in the ordinary time we are solving. Is that clear? So, ये जो nine difficult सवाल हैं, ये आपको छोड़ देते हैं. Prior to this, को देना है forty one. Once you are established in forty one, then take a call whether you want to go for moderate or not. That's all. So, what do you want to see that easy question is coming or which one is coming? That's all. Even if you look at last year's paper, 2022, it may be out of 80, 40 were simple. But this question is coming to you to practice. This is not coming to you intuitively. Intuitively, you know. It's not coming to you. It's coming to you. It's coming to you to practice. So, what do you want to do in this? First, avoid unfamiliar questions. जिसको आपने कभी सॉल्व नहीं किया है, ऐसा सवाल, ऐसा पैसेज और ऐसा टॉपिक, इसको प्रायोरिटी मत दो, इट विल कंसीडर योर टाइम। सेकंड, अवॉइड क्वेश्चन देर बिग इनफॉरमेशन यूज्ड, बट द नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चंस आर लेस। सो रॉ मटेरियल इतना है और इस पे एक ही सवाल आया है, सो नेचुरली कंसीडर � Teen option becomes incorrect, and you automatically get it, get remaining correct option. Okay, usko use karo. Use tally method means option ko pehle dekho and see which option fits the requirement of the question. And finally, avoid those questions where even a word or phrase or sentence is unfamiliar. Agar ya ap kar paate ho, then you can easily figure out easy question and give priority to them. If you do that, you can easily qualify yourself. Are you getting my point? लेकिन ये कब होगा? When you practice it, ये automatically नहीं होगा। ये आपके ध्यान में। Is that clear? You need to keep this in mind. All right. ये सवाल हमेशा पूछे जाते हैं। Okay? Many times these questions are asked. So particularly those who have problems in maths, वो बोलते हैं कि हम maths को छोड़ दें क्या? ऐसा नहीं करना। you look at last year, 40 questions were from maths. Agar maths ko chhod doge, toh half of the paper you are saying, no, I won't solve. Are you getting my point? So, jo bhi aapke le tough element hai, not only maths, even RC is new. Kuch log le tough ho sakta hai. But still, you can still try to solve easy questions of these topics. So, maths mein bhi kuch topic aise hai, jo simple hai compared to other topics. So, usko priority ne do. प्रिपरेशन कब स्टार्ट करना है? फ्यू मंथ बिफोर प्रिलिम और एक साल पहले। सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन योर करंट स्टेटस। अगर आपका बेसिक भी ठीक नहीं हुआ, लैंग्वेज का, मैथ्स का, देन अर्लीएस्ट इज बेटर। लेकिन बेसिक आपका क्लियर है, देन यू कैन स्टार्ट बिफोर फाइव मंथ्स ऑफ प्रिलिम्स। जब भी आप जीएस लेते so, look, how much class will be, how much will be, and then mock test. 
और जो क्लास में होता है उसको रिवाइज करो यू नीड नॉट स्टडी दिस मोर देन दैट वाई बिकॉज दिस इज अगेन क्वालिफाइंग इफ यू फोकस टू मच ऑन सी सैट योर जीएस टाइम विल बी एनक्रोच और आपको जीएस में वक्त नहीं सो यू नीड टू यू नो कट डाउन योर टाइम फॉर सी सैट क्वालिफाइंग नेक्स्ट ये दूसरे एग्जाम में हेल्प करता है क्या सी सेट करता है बट ज्यादा नहीं करता है सो मेनी ऑफ माई स्टूडेंट्स हु हैव पास बैंकिंग एग्जाम दे हैव शेयर देर इनपुट दैट जो भी यहाँ सिखाया गया है उसका उनको यूज बैंकिंग या टी टी एग्जाम में भी हुआ है सो टू दैट एक्सटेंट सी सेट प्रिपरेशन हेल्प यू एल्स वेयर ऑल्सो बट नॉट मच देन लैंग्वेज एबिलिटी पे कितना ध्यान देना है सो एज आई सेड फेयर इन ऑफ गुड वोकेबलरी गुड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ ग्रामर एंड इंडिकेटर वर्ड इतना ही ध्यान देना है और पेपर के बाहर का कुछ नहीं आता सो इवन योर पेपर न्यूज द हिंदू का जो है उसका लैंग्वेज भी हार्ड होता है राइट right? उससे ज्यादा हार्ड कभी नहीं आता गेटिंग माई पॉइंट देन मैथमेटिक्स में क्या करना है तो मैथमेटिक्स में आपको ये करना है जो सिंपल टॉपिक है सिंपल मीन्स एवरेज प्रोपोर्शन परसेंटेज इनको पहले आप प्रायोरिटी देते एंड स्टार्ट अर्ली इफ यू आर रियली फील हैंडी कैप इन मैथ्स अगर मैथ्स आपका वीक पॉइंट नहीं है देन यू कैन टेक इट लेटर ऑन एज योर क्लास स्टार्ट स्कोर कितना करना चाहिए टारगेट सो एज आई सेड एनी थिंग बिटवीन एटी टू हंड्रेड ये टारगेट होगा लेकिन सिक्सटी सिक्स एग्जैक्टली मत हो समझ में आ रहा है आपको क्योंकि ऊपर नीचे अगर हो गया तो अटेम्प्ट गया सो एटी टू हंड्रेड कौन सा भी टारगेट रखो हंड्रेड के आगे मत रखो बिकॉज इट इज पॉइंट लेस है ना उसमें दिमाग क्यों इतना खर्च करना है अगर वैसे ही पास हो रहे हो वाई यू नीड टू टेक एक्स्ट्रा एफर्ट्स सो एनी टारगेट बिटवीन एटी टू हंड्रेड मिनिमम एटी मैक्सिमम हंड्रेड इतना आप ठीक है, आपके मन में कुछ सवाल है तो पूछो अदरवाइज वॉट वी विल डू वी विल अंडरटेक वन राइटिंग एक्सरसाइज चेक योर थॉट प्रोसेस वाई बिकॉज इन सी सैट यू गेट एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू मोल्ड योर थॉट प्रोसेस आई एम गेटिंग माई पॉइंट सी एज एस टोल्ड यू टूवर्ड्स द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द लेक्चर सी सैट नॉट ओनली हेल्प यू इन प्रिलिम इट ऑल्सो हेल्प यू इन मेन एग्जाम हाउ बाय Preparing you to process your material quality too. See that me, you are such a good seeker. In this way, you will be able to write well, you will be able to understand well. Because anyway, you are going to study C set, right? But you should be able to make use of those skills elsewhere. You have to learn to seek now. Here, here, is that clear? All right. Write down one statement. इसके बारे में आपको आपका ओपिनियन लिखना है द रियल स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ इंडियन सोसाइटी द रियल स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ इंडियन सोसाइटी हैज इट्स जेनेसिस हैज इट्स जेनेसिस इन इट्स डायवर्सिटी in its diversity examine the statement examine the statement ab ye jo aapko statement diya hai do you think it is general enough har ek ko malum hota hai the person who is fairly graduate knows this case okay genesis ka matlab kya hai origin what we call in marathi ugam ओके okay. अब आपको क्या करना है इस स्टेटमेंट को लॉजिकली एक्सप्लेन करना है एंड यू कैन डू दैट इन वर्ल्ड लिमिट ऑफ वन फिफ्टी सिंपल दो या तीन पैसेजेस लिख के आपको एक्सप्लेन करना है कि ये कैसे होता है आर यू गेटिंग माय पॉइंट बिकॉज सी सेट अल्टीमेटली गोइंग टू टीच यू ऑल दिस स्किल्स कि ये कैसे करना राइट स्टार्ट एल गिव यू फाइव मिनट्स सेवन मिनट्स टू डू इट जो भी आपको लगता है थिंक करो एंड लिखो
last two minutes. Yeah. Okay, what is your thought process? Tell me. Simply read out. You don't really care about it. Stain service comes from multilateral. Sit down, sit down. Stain service comes from multilateral. Indian society has a similar. Oh, 
Oh, no. Nice attempt. But again, as I said, it's not something which is logical or audible. There is scope for it. Yes. Anybody else? No. Indian society, the diverse and various aspects of the language, religion, and this put and many more. Is the diversity of states because to make those states have their own different geographical positions, environment, and different religion. Most of the people are following them. I just put on how they follow their culture. States have different people in their different areas, so affecting people of China. There is so much difference between the people of North India and South India, their habitats, their approaches, social communities, and their problems. So you start diversity, right? Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Online people want to read your answer? Yes. Anyone else want to read the answer? Raise the hand. I will unmute. Have you written the answer? Yes, online people. All right, see, now let me tell you one thing. Writing an answer is like preparing the recipe. Are you getting my point? Writing an answer is like preparing the recipe. Dish. Not only ingredient has to be correct, they are to be put in right sequence. Are you getting my point? So imagine that you are preparing a tea and after putting the pot on the gas, you put out the tea powder first and not water. What will happen? It will burn and instead of tea, you will have kata. Are you getting my point? So you have to start with the keyword. So what is the keyword of keywords into the statement? Real strength. You have to start with this real strength. So tell me, real strength kya hoti hai kisi society ki? What is the real strength of any society? How can you decide that a society is really strong society? Unity. Unity. But do we have unity in everything? No. So saying that we are always united is myth. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes we oppose each other like cat and dog. But all the contribution. How will you decide that a society is a really strong society? How will you decide? Or about person, how will you decide a person is really strong or not? Okay. It means what capability? I mean, this objective. There are many capabilities. It's objective. To be able to survive in a situation. Adverse or harsh situation. This will be the real strength. Normally, the Sabi will say that it is strong. But the challenge is happening. That is what it is. That indicates whether we are really strong. लेकिन ये जो ability है, ये automatic आती है क्या? It comes out of your adaptability. Adaptability क्या आती है? कि आपको tolerance नहीं है, right? And that's why you are able to withstand the changes. ठीक है, अब ये कब आता है adaptability? Yes. Adaptability, adaptability comes when a person or society is exposed to different situations from the beginning. 
जैसे मैं हमेशा एक एग्जांपल देता हूँ इमेजिन गाइस लिविंग इन फैमिली एंड अनदर गाइस लिविंग इन होस्टेल हु डू यू थिंक इज मोर एडॉप्टेबल होस्टेल लाइक व्हाई बिकॉज़ ही और शी इज एक्सपोज्ड टू डिफरेंट चैलेंजेस व्हेन आर सिमिलरली आवर सोसाइटी हैज बीन सब्जेक्टेड टू डिफरेंट चैलेंजेस सो ये जो है डिफरेंट आइडियाज डिफरेंट चैलेंजेस ये हमारे यहाँ पहले से ही जैसे देखो वन ऑफ द ओल्डेस्ट रिलीजन इन इंडिया इज हिंदुइज्म ओके उसको वेदिक रिलीजन भी बोलते हैं सो इन हिंदुइज्म देर इज नो यूनानिमिटी अबाउट एनीथिंग किसी भी एक चीज के बारे में हमारे यहाँ कंसेंसस नहीं हमारे यहाँ एक और है क्या बहुत सारे हैं सो इफ यू आर फ्रॉम विलेजेस यू नो ईच विलेज हैज इट्स ओन डीटी विलेज डीटी ग्राम देवता व्हिच इज नॉट फाउंड एनीवेयर एल्स ऑन द फेस ऑफ द अर्थ इज इट नॉट तो सिंगल गॉड नहीं है एक किताब है क्या जो सब हिंदू मानते हैं नहीं है अलग अलग किताब है इवन विद इन फिलोसॉफी देयर आर डिफरेंट स्कूल्स ऑफ थॉट्स जैसे वैदिक में द्वैत है शिष्ट अद्वैत है अद्वैत है राइट right? द्वैत क्या बोलता है गॉड एंड मैन आर डिफरेंट एंड गॉड इज सुपीरियर टू यू विशिष्ट अद्वैत बोलता है वो अलग तो दिखते हैं लेकिन मैन इज पार्ट ऑफ एंड गॉड इज सुपीरियर अद्वैत बोलता है नहीं दोनों एक ही है सिर्फ आदमी को ज्ञान नहीं है वो अज्ञान ही है माया है उसके आंखों के सामने वो उसको बता दिए तुम अलग हो लेकिन वो गॉड ही है जब उसे ब्रह्म ज्ञान हो जाएगा आत्मा का ज्ञान हो जाएगा हिल बी गॉड तो ये जो डाइवर्स स्ट्रीम्स है पहले से ही इसकी वजह से क्या हुआ है जो भी बाहर से आया है नया उसको हमने अकोमोडेट किया है उसको हमने फेस किया है एंड दैट्स तो ये किससे कनेक्टेड है डाइवर्सिटी से बिकॉज वी हैव बीन डाइवर्स सिंस बिगिनिंग वी हैव बीन एबल टू अडाप्ट टू द चेंजेस एंड दैट हैज हेल्प अस टू सर्वाइव इन चैलेंजिंग सिचुएशन एंड दैट्स रियली मेक्स अस स्ट्रांग सो ये जो लॉजिकल चेन है रियल स्ट्रेंथ एंड डाइवर्सिटी का ये आपको बताना है देन योर आंसर स्टैंड्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम द क्राउड इज दैट क्लियर सिर्फ डायवर्सिटी से शुरुआत करोगे एग्जामिनर विल नॉट बी इंप्रेस्ड बिकॉज़ ऑलमोस्ट एवरीवन स्टार्ट्स विद डायवर्सिटी ऐसे नहीं कर रहा इज दैट क्लियर लेकिन ये थॉट प्रोसेस कैसे लाना है आपके आंसर राइटिंग में ये आपको सी सेट से करना है बिकॉज़ यू एनालाइज द टेक्स्ट क्लियरली डेलिब्रेटली यू पे अटेंशन टू ईच एंड एवरी वर्ड ईच एंड एवरी सेंटेंस देयर रिलेशन टू ईच अदर एंड देन यू आर एबल टू फिगर आउट द आंसर even you are able to also pay attention to how the author is writing one spot how he or she is able to convince about what he or she is saying is that clear so ye aap se sat se seekh sakte ho in my opinion and that is what makes preparation really interesting so jaise maine bola hai in the era of id everything is available to you no one can stand apart from the crowd okay unless you put in real efforts to process the information qualitatively to prepare your notes so never ever rely on anything ready made let me tell you from the beginning jo aapke samne ready made aa raha hai wo aapke liye harmful hai it won't help you to compete so jo bhi ready made current affair ready made magazines jo bhi aa raha hai usko aap process mat do kyunki aapko opportunity nahi milega koi aur process karke aapko ready made de raha hai तो जो खुद आपने किया है वो तो ध्यान में में आ रहा है जो किसी ने और नहीं दिया है आपको यू विल रीड इट पैसिवली एंड फॉरगेट दैट शुड नॉट इज दैट क्लियर ऑल राइट नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑनवर्ड्स जब भी सी का लेक्चर हमारा होगा विल स्टार्ट विद आरसी फर्स्ट ओके आरसी का कुछ पोर्शन हो जाने के बाद विल स्टार्ट विद लॉजिकल रिजनिंग एंड लॉजिकल रिजनिंग के बाद थोड़ा आरसी ले लेंगे बचा हुआ एंड देन विल गो फॉर लॉजिकल ऐसे अल्टरनेट करेंगे सो आई एम रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर आर सी लॉजिकल रिजनिंग एंड डी आई डी एस डेटा इंटरप्रिटेशन एंड डेटा सफिशियंस मैथ्स कॉम्पोनेट विल बी टेकन केयर बाय सुजीत पॉप सर राइट आई थिंक दिस इज इन फॉर टूडे 
If you have any queries, please ask. Otherwise, we'll stop. Online people, after two hours, please push it. Online people, have you got my answer? <laughs> 